When you wake up a fright, when your mind is alight, when you're shaking your hips on a Saturday night, I wanna tell you from me, you are all that I see, and the beast in your head won't keep you from me. When you try to abstain, when you break your brain, and the bug in your ear just drives you insane, I need to look into the mirror, I need to see the skies much clearer.
changing what I thought I knew, and now I'm left with no damn clue. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. Jolene, 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 Jolene. Cause then I'm forced to.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the stream. Last time we finished up uh, the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Which was a really cool game, but oh boy, that ending was really dark. And uh, today we are starting on Kathy Rain, the director's cut. Now this is originally a game from, uh, I think about 2016. Um, but about two, three years back, they released the director's cut, which has like um, an expanded story and uh, um, a different ending, I think, that the creators say is uh, much more satisfying. Um, and I don't really know a whole lot about this game. I just know it's a point and click detective game and you play as a cool biker chick named Kathy Rain. So, you know, that's enough for me. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Okay, let's have a look at the options here. Um, okay, before I get started, how is the volume for everybody? Like... How loud is the game in comparison to uh, my mic? Sounding good? Okay. Um, well, let's get into it. And um, if the voices in the game sound a little bit too low or too, uh, too loud, just let me know and I can take a moment to adjust it. But, uh, yeah, let's get started. Hey, you! Uh, hey. Oh, man. Let's go oh, straight to bed. God, this is so comfy. I'm just going to lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. Okay, don't do that last part. I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. We are we so are I was very fucked up. used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... Wait, hear me out! So... I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. I don't think we're listening think right now. His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him. Joseph Rain. Yeah, he is, was my grandfather. I don't, really don't want to talk about it. I haven't seen him since I was a kid. A lifetime ago. Okay, so I guess our grandfather just died. What a... What a weird way to bring up this topic, uh, roommate, whatever your name is. Yeah, he is... was my grandfather. Hey, wait a minute. I never told you where I grew up. Oh, well, I... Uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously. Eileen. I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're gonna help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know. Well, anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. Okay. Are you gonna go? I don't know. Good night, Eileen. Oof. <sighs> Good night, Kathy. Well, that was really awkward. Typical roommate behavior. <laughs> September 25th, 1995. Day one. Oh, God, make it stop. We are Kathy, 
And we are all kinds of fucked up. Hangover, probably. Okay, let's see here. We have a notebook, a stun gun, a pack of cigarettes, and a Zippo lighter. Okay. Let's figure out the controls here. Just click to move. And... Messy. Just the way I like it. There's no right-click action, just, just a single-click action. Okay, that's simple enough. Well, first of all, let's turn off this alarm clock. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later. E. I'm so getting a new roommate. Oof. Well, I guess I should get going. I'm late enough as it is. Spacebar, hold, display interactables in the room. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Hobbs Barrow had that functionality too. I really like that. Makes it uh, easy to not miss stuff. There is so much here. Holy shit. Uh, Eileen seems... Uh, hmm. Maybe not very respectful of my boundaries. Also, what a way to get informed that my gran grandfather just died. To have my roommate excitedly tell me about this guy who died in the newspaper who happens to share my last name. Also, look at these different sides of the room. Let's see, we got a cross, we got what well, looks to be a Titanic poster, pink suitcase, a pink mirror, a pink bear, here a poster with a heart on it, pink bed sheets, and I look at my side of the room. Okay, this, this cupboard is broken, there's a pile of stuff here, there's a guitar, there's like clothes strewn all over and underneath the bed. I love that. Yeah, that totally is a Titanic poster. That movie's not out yet. It's a promo poster Eileen got for being an extra. Right, this takes place. She tells everyone who walks in here the same joke. Spoiler alert, the boat sinks. <laughs> this takes place in 1995. Also, wait. Eileen is an extra in this? That movie's not out yet. It's a promo poster Eileen got for being an extra. She tells. Wow, okay. She's an extra in Titanic. <laughs> <sighs> Honestly, she can believe in what she wants as long as she doesn't try to shove it down my throat. Eileen's obnoxious alarm clock. The noise makes me want to stab myself with something dull. It reminds me of the movie you were an extra in? You were an extra in a movie? I don't think I knew that. That's pretty cool. Well, what movie was it? Eileen's schedule. There's a note for today. Set alarm clock for Kathy. Can't have her miss the funeral. Oh my god. So, <laughs> Jack Black's like year one. Mm, not sure I've heard of that one. Did you get to meet Jack Black? Eileen makes her bed with surgical precision. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Mildred. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get her for that. I wish I could wrap up that fact and save it for Christmas. Can't really see you in there at all, other than maybe a tiny bit of your shoulder. <laughs> Oh, they kept you separate. 
Bill, that's that's pretty cool. Okay, Eileen is quite a character. Like, look what she put on the schedule here. Eileen schedule. There's a note for today. Set alarm clock for Kathy. Can't have her miss the funeral. Is is like that's so presumptuous. Like just the way she told me that my grandfather died in in that manner, and then she just decided that I have to go to the funeral, even though she doesn't know what kind of relationship I have with him. Like, I already don't like Eileen. <laughs> More posters here. Um, mm, do I recognize these? These might be a little bit too pixelated for me to recognize what they are. I'm fairly sure it's about some guy who falls in love with his golden retriever. Aww. I think that movie is about a girl and a boy who hate each other at first, and then they fall in love for no reason at all. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's every romantic comedy ever. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, sounds pretty standard. Oh, but we're, we're so not like other girls we are. We, we are cool biker chicks. We don't like romantic comedies. <laughs> we meet again, Mr. Bear. Don't give me that look. It's not my fault you ended up so close to my lighter. Oh my god. Okay, maybe we're pretty mean as well. <laughs> Eileen's closet, filled to the brink with inherited clothes and Christian joy. Hmm. Procrastinator, make your best efforts to miss the funeral. Oh my god. So instead of going to the funeral, we've been <laughs> criticizing our roommate. Antagonistic roommates, wonderful, yeah. Makeup check, hair check, horrible mood, and contempt for humanity check. Oh my god, we are we're so edgy, right? <laughs> Okay, cross schedule. I think I think we got most of it on Eileen's side of the room. Color printer. Super fancy apparently. A fact which Eileen loves to remind me of. Eileen borrowed it from school. She takes a bunch of computer classes. I'm no geek, but I know how to use one. A computer, that is. Not a geek. <laughs> I, I bet you I bet you know how to use a geek. I bet you could figure it out. It's some advanced scanner thingy. Our room phone. It's got an external line. Landline. I don't need to make any calls right now. Hey. Okay. Let's let, have a look at our side of the room. The thing. One of my favorite horror movies. Yeah, that's a good movie. Pulp Fiction. Love that flick. Yeah, it's alright. Not the biggest Tarantino fa fan myself. So weird that this takes place in the 90s. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Just some random band poster. Messy, just the way I like it. My electric guitar. Got it cheap from a lesbian I met at a concert. Helped me get rid of my last two roommates. Nice. Lesbian guitar. Mm, well, that seems to be it. I was hoping with all this stuff in this room, there was going to be something I could pick up and put in my inventory. I love putting stuff in my inventory. That's, uh... Prime adventure game stuff. Um, I'll write down clues in this as I find them. Clues. Taser. NZ-500 self-defense stun gun. NZ-5... Hello? Can I... My smoke's about a half a pack. Started when I was 12 and never looked back. 
Jesus. Pretty much the only thing keeping me sane. That's not healthy, Kathy. That's that's really unhealthy. Started when you were 12? 12. My trusty Zippo. The only thing my deadbeat dad left me. There's a crude inscription, BH, which is a mystery to me. Hmm. That be dad sounds like we don't have the best relationship with our family. Yeah, some Tarantino movies are good, but he's such a douche that it makes it tough to watch them. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how I feel about a lot of them. Also, I feel like a lot of them just feel like excuses for him to say the, the n-word a lot. It's like, I'll just write my character saying slurs. Okay. Well, uh, nothing left to do here, so let's, let's leave our dorm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at this. Look at the parallax. Ah, shit. Ah, fuck. Just my luck. Do you know why I pulled you over, ma'am? Uh... You need directions to the nearest donut shop? Oh, sick burn. Gotta be to compliment me on my driving, right? That ticket quota of yours wasn't gonna fill itself. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, I love these choices. Um... Let's go this one. That ticket quota of yours wasn't gonna fill itself? Trying to be a smart ass, ma'am? Nobody likes a smart ass. Yeah, well, I don't you like know cops. How fast you were going? Yes. And? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the smart ass playing dumb. Aren't you just a perfect blend of obnoxious? <laughs> I guess so. Look, I'm really sorry, officer. I'm in a huge hurry to this thing, and the road has been empty for miles. You know how it is. Well, what I do know is that the speed limit here is 65. I clocked you at 77. Ugh. You're getting a ticket. Oh, to the movies? I prefer horror flicks. Regular comedian, huh? Don't quit your day job. Great. Well, I guess we're going to f going to the funeral after all. Twelve miles over the speed limit well, on a completely empty are. stretch of road. Minute drive and a harebrained speeding ticket. God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. God. We are so cool. <laughs> that said, this is a pretty cool smoking animation. Uh, oh, okay, we have control already. The Catmobile? Is that what we call our motorcycle? No, I'm not leaving just yet. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. Okay. No time for that now. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. Okay, I guess we just gotta go to the funeral right now. 
There it is. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity, a pillar of the community, and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Funerals. Yeah. Oh, Kathy, you big baby. Just talk to her. So who's that then? Mrs. Rain. Is that our mom or our grandma? Also, can I look at other stuff before I talk to her? I can. Elizabeth Parker. Eric Mitchell. Stephen Cummings. Benjamin Hayworth. Okay, well, this is not super interesting to just to read a bunch of names. I bet these are Easter eggs for something, but... Look at the entire graveyard instead of talking to Grandma. A family mausoleum. It says, Price. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. Hmm. Conwell Springs. I never thought I'd return to this place. Oh, well, we're here now. Joseph Irving Rain. Yeah, that's that's grandpa. Grandpa. Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could have been different. Vincent Price reference, maybe, maybe. He was in a lot of horror movies, so... Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, Anne? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now, finally coming home. Let's hope he can, wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness, we have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon, then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. Okay. Okay, we are, we are open to reconnecting with our family. So, Kathy mentioned uh, six, she was six when her mom took her away. And she mentioned a deadbeat dad. So, I'm, I'm thinking maybe our dad was uh, not that great a guy, maybe an abuser. And our mom took us away which kind of left us estranged from the rest of our family, but we are open to re reconciling. Is what I'm gathering from all of this. Okay. 
look at some of these other tombstones, I guess. Oh. Jane Stevens. I wonder if these are like I'm sorry. Deaths or something. Thanks. If you wish to find God, Ugh. the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Man. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from a path of sin. Ugh, fuck you. What a sh what a shitty thing to say. Wow. It makes you so, sh so sure I'm on a sinful path. Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? Ho ho ho. If you wish to find God. So presumptuous. You're not familiar with the concept of a lost cause, are you? No sin, but what am I supposed to do for fun? <laughs> Sassy. Uh... I want to tell him off, but I also don't have the energy to get into, like, a fucking theological argument with a priest. You know? No sin, but what am I supposed to do for fun? Behind those words is a deep wound. Uh, fuck a desire off. to belong. If you let him, Christ can fill that void. Ugh, please don't make Christ fill my void. I'm totally not up for that. The crude facade of a lost soul. Ah, uh, fuck off. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Can we... Can we use our stun gun on this guy? Aw. Wow, what a jerk. What a shitty thing to say to someone after a funeral. I mean, that's when people are, like, vulnerable and have their guard down. It's it's really gross. What what a gross thing to do. Okay, we can go to uh, Grandma's house. Bike selection. Oh my god. We can unlock different bikes. Oh. Okay, that's that's gonna be fun. Uh well, let's go to Grandma's house. Grandma, anybody home? All right. Go look around here. That's leaving. There's nothing quite like the soothing sound of rain falling on a window. It's a pretty nice sound, yeah. Nice black leather coat, right up my alley. <laughs> because we're so cool. A mere single pair of boots on display. Boy, do we live in different worlds. Just one pair of boots? Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. This paint looks fresh. Grandma must have had this restored recently. Is our family Swedish? Living room... Let's leave the living room for last. An old wheelchair. Not too dusty. Grandpa must have used it towards the end. A small table lamp. Phone and a phone book. Remember phone books? Man, remember phone books? I remember. I don't have anything to search for yet. Okay, we can use the phone, but we don't actually have any numbers right now. Oh. I guess we do have some numbers. We can call the dorm room. I don't have anything to talk about with E right now. Okay. Landlines, phone books. It is weird, isn't it? It 
It's a photo of this very farm from way back. It says June 12, 1910 in the corner. So this is a farmhouse. A wedding photo from when my grandparents married. They look younger than I am now. Things have sure changed. Let's see, if we were six when our mom took us away, then we're 21 now, if it's been about 15 years. I don't know. That's pretty young to get married, but, you know. Yeah, especially in the early 1900s, that wouldn't be too odd. Some kind of winter forest scene. I've always wondered if it's supposed to be Conwell Woods or not. Dog fighting. Grandpa used to love that stuff. Okay, there's upstairs and there's the living room door. Let's have a look at the living room. Living rooms, bedrooms, dinettes. Oh yeah. Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You we had did, a We did no such thing. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Mm. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle, in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Oof. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. Mm. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon, then? Tell the truth, you had her committed to a mental institution. Oof. Uh... We did what now? I want to I wanna know more about that. Mom is... I had her committed to a place where she could get some real help. I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry to hear that. In spite of everything that happened when she took you away. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So, what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. There's a lot here. For what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face, like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word, forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Oh, jeez. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. Oof. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Incidents in 81. Wow. Church brochure. Ugh. Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first, I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. It must have had something to do with the war. Hmm. PTSD? What did the doctor say? What about the police? 
Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. Mm. What did the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's Ouch. what they call it. That's, I've heard it all. That's by pretty now. awful. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Mm. Hmm. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. Jeez. So nobody really knows what happened to him, and nobody really knows what was even wrong with him. Now, sounds kind of par, par for the course for doctors, to be honest. What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? <sighs> Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. Mm. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff's station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go. Yeah, well, don't get your hopes up. Let me know if I can be of any more help. Oh boy. What do you think about this church, Grandma? They seem harmless to me, but they can be a bit pushy at times. Yeah, a <laughs> bit. I could say that. Handing out pamphlets at funerals is in pretty bad taste. Awfully strange behavior for a priest, I'll give you that. Mm. Yeah, see, even Grandma agrees. I don't want to show her that. She'll just start worrying about me. I don't want to show her that. I don't want to... Okay. Grandma. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. Okay, can we look around a bit more? Okay, we can. I'm glad. Ooh, so many things to look at. That's my great-grandfather, Eric Wren. I never met him. They changed the spelling to Rain after he died, I think. I see. Some woman dressed fancy. I'm not sure how I'm related to her, but she has my hair. Planes, planes, and more planes. Okay. Grandpa was into planes. Grandpa in his Air Force uniform. Looks to be in his early 20s. Planes, planes, and more planes. Planes. Hey. Expensive looking scotch. That thing has been standing there forever. Nostalgic. Took some time to reminisce. I used to love digging through those drawers when I was a kid, looking for coins, buttons, and trinkets. There's there's no place quite like Grandma's house, huh? I used to love digging through those drawers when I was a kid. Nice leather chair. Freckles, the old farm cat, used to love that thing. Freckles. Freckles. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. Okay, that's just See sitting you later, back Gramps. down. Take care, dear. Very good name for a kitty. No, cat's probably not around anymore if it's been 15 years. 
there's nothing quite like the soothing sound of rain falling on a window. Grandma. Oh, that's, again, that's just talking. Well, goodbye, Kathy. Grandma has prepared some tea for us. Okay, let's have a look at the An intricate toy airplane with moving parts. Nice. I remember playing with that. Grandpa had a whole collection of them. Ooh. Model plane building. Pretty fun. A decent sized book collection. Most of them science or history related from the looks of it. A painting of a blue sky with clouds. Probably supposed to be a backdrop for those angels. Grandma always had a penchant for little angel figurines like these. I bet E would love them. My grandma had a thing for uh, turtle figurines. And my other grandma had a thing for uh, clown paintings and clown dolls, which is it's kind of, it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> That's where the nice china is kept, only for special occasions. I have yet to see it outside the cabinet. Okay, well, uh, that seems to be it for this room. I would like to check upstairs. I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Aw, but... But... Don't give me the option to go upstairs, then, if you're not going to actually let me go. It's the brochure that priest gave me at the funeral. The logo stands out, but other than that, it's just the usual church mumbo-jumbo. Washing away your sins, salvation, blah, blah. There's also an address at the bottom. You know, if I ever feel like getting my god on. <laughs> Good old Satan. Better get his snowmobile ready for that day. <laughs> so, the logo seems to be, what, three orbs? Is that supposed to be, like, the the Holy Trinity? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I am guessing that later on we're gonna need to go to the church. Okay, well, uh, for now, let us... Head out to the sheriff's. We are on the case. We are gonna figure out what happened to Grandpa back in 1981. Although, I bet the, the cops are not gonna be too happy to see us, considering we have a speeding ticket right now, and we hate the police. Also, they, they don't like to be called on their fucking failures, so. But it's a start. Whoa. Drums. <laughs> what is this soundtrack? Hey, Sheriff, what's the deal with that bum? What bum? The one in the cell. Uh... Oh, I thought it was with you. Well, shit. What? You just put someone in a cell and you don't know what, what they're even there for? That uh, sounds typical. This soundtrack is, uh, interesting. Look at that sheriff. <laughs> Didn't want to get up. Had to ride his, had to scoot his chair over, and then open the, the the window to get this coffee instead of just getting up. Oh my god. Okay. Land of the free. How's the paperwork coming along, Lenny? Uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. 
That's no good. We're gonna have to cancel lunch today. Again? Oh, man. Your motivation shouldn't be limited by your growling stomach, Lanny. <sighs> if you say so, boss. Oh my god, I could just I could just stand here and listen to these two all day. Okay, let's actually check stuff out here. Not their peak hours it seems. Hey, that's a restricted area. Oh, okay. Sorry. A bunch of cops lining up for a photo. A medieval fortress near an ocean, probably supposed to be somewhere in Europe. A medieval fortress near an ocean, probably. Various notices and a wanted poster. Fax machine. Fax machines, the pinnacle of modern technology. Yeah. You could send like a letter and then it'll print it out somewhere else. Fucking amazing. We can call. Hey, do yeah. you mind if I use this phone here? Sorry, that's not allowed. All right. Can I help you, miss? Yeah, I had some questions about my... Hey, wait. I know you. Uh... I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. Lenny? I, I don't know who you are, Lenny. I'm drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? No. Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, what can I do for you today? So you grew up to be a cop, huh? Well... I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. All right. Can I tase him? Yeah, that won't get me into trouble at all. Aw. I don't want to show him that. What's your opinion on this church? I think it's a nice enough church. Why? I don't know. The priest seemed odd. Kind of pushy. Yeah, I get your point. But I know the guy. He's harmless. If you say so. Mm. I don't want to show him that. Hey. Well, gotta go. Good luck! Oh, and have a complimentary cup of joe if you want. Ah, maybe later. Thanks. Free coffee. Sure thing. See ya. Thanks, Lenny. A potted plant. Looks a bit thirsty. Hey, gotta water it, but you can't underwater it, but you can't overwater it either. Lots of police reports. They all look fairly recent, though. Nothing older than 1990. Just your standard coffee maker. What should I do with it? Use... Use pot of coffee on cups. Nah, I'm good. Had a cup this morning. All right. Coffee cups, both used and unused. Well... Nothing exciting here. Have a look over here. Sheriff's office. A gold medal of some kind. Just some photo. Nothing special about it. A photo of the sheriff shaking hands with some bald guy in a suit. Uh -huh. Probably the mayor. It's always the mayor. Just some photo. No Just some photo. Trophies. I guess somebody's a winner. <laughs> Tons of miscellaneous files. I don't see anything labeled as police reports, so those must be elsewhere. All right. Well, 
let us uh, have a seat and talk to Sheriff. Oh crap, it's you again. The smart ass returns. Uh huh. You have some more crimes to confess? Ugh. Oh, you know, maybe a felony or two. Wouldn't be surprised. Look, I'm busy here. What do you want? I just have a few questions. That's all. Fine. Go ahead. What do you think of this church? What's your opinion on this church? <laughs> Could it's ask everybody church. about the church. I go there myself every Sunday. Do you? I wonder if they're a cult. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods, that's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Uh, could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Police report. Tell me about that. Could I have a look at that report? Absolutely not. They are official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. Uh. But I'm family. But I'm family. Doesn't that count for something? You consider yourself family? I've never even seen you before in this town. It's complicated. That's, that's not for you to decide. I am family. Not to mention illegal. Handing out evidence to anyone who asks for it. Ugh. Aw, oh, come on, Sheriff. What's the big deal? It was a long time ago. It would make this girl very, very happy. Are you trying to use flirtation on an officer of the law? Well, that shit may work on numbnuts like Lenny, but I got work to do. An officer of the law. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? The Too law. Much Try not to pop a vein. Law. You want to see the inside of a cell? What? The oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. Just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. The law, follow the rules. Ah, oh, shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ. This, the sheriff annoys me already. Holy crap. Hey, Lenny, can I, can I maybe sneak in here? Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Hey, I need to see the police report from 81 when my grandfather was found by the old sheriff. Hmm. We only keep reports filed after 1990 in here, so I'd have to go check the archives in the other room. If it was up to me, I'd be happy to go take a look, but you heard the sheriff before. I'm sorry, but I can't help you unless he approves it. Ugh. Ugh, fine. Well, gotta go. See ya. Gotta get in there. I can't while he's sitting there. Hmm. Maybe I can rustle up some sort of distraction. What if I stun him? Self-defense stun gun. What if I my set fire to the no. only thing my deadbeat dad left me? There's a crude inscription, beat. What really happened to you that night, Grandpa? There must be a way to get my hands on that report, but I doubt asking nicely will do it. Let's, uh, fuck them, burn the place down. There's a crude...
Ah, okay, so that's how we use stuff. We just drag it. Use Zippo lighter on the sheriff. I'm trying to cut down on the pyromania. Aw. Yeah, that won't get me into trouble at all. Let's burn this flag. I'm trying to cut. I want to set fire to something. Like, so badly. I want to burn this flag. I'm trying to cut down on. What's your. I, I don't know. Yeah. If you say. Okay. You want to smoke? I don't want to show him that. You want to smoke? I don't want to show him that. Uh... It's being used right now. Good idea, but they would notice me right now. Nah, I'm good. I may be... Nah, I'm good. Had a cup this morning. I may be able to do something else with the coffee, though. Do something with the coffee, huh? Good idea, but they would notice me right now. I'm having a hard time following that logic. If he wanted coffee, I'm sure he would have taken some already. Drug his coffee? That would be great. Don't have anything to drug him with, though. My smoke's about a half a pack. Started when I was 12 and never looked back. That's not how you treat premium tobacco. Can I just tase them and take the files? No, that's... I'd prefer to electrocute something and or someone else. And or. Hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the day? He can get his own coffee. Thank you very much. Wanted everybody to have some goddamn coffee. Got an achievement for that. <laughs> hmm. Let's see if I can rustle up some sort of distraction. That's not how you treat. Oh, I do enjoy burning things, just not that. That's kind of an arbitrary thing to do. I'd prefer to electrocute. Mm. I prefer to smoke outdoors. Yeah, that won't. I want to electrocute them so badly. All right, we got our first adventure game puzzle going. I'm trying to cut down on the pyromania. That's not how. Nah, I need those for self intoxication. I shouldn't waste juice on that. I'd prefer to elect. Can I call someone? can't while he's sitting there. Right. Various notices and a wanted poster. Maybe I Fax can. Machines. The A gold medal of some kind.
my trusty Zippo. There's a crude inscription. Oh, I do enjoy burning things. Oh, I... Burned Sheriff. I don't want to show him that. I feel like doing something to his coffee is definitely a good idea, but... Don't ask me what. It's being used right now. Not a big fan of that idea. Yeah, maybe we do need to go someplace else. Get some more items in our inventory, like some sleeping pills or something. Not their peak hours. Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. Oh. What? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Uh. Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. <laughs> I, uh. Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And, and then maybe we could eat the food together? I'm really busy right now. Maybe later. Oh, okay. See ya. Felt, felt no apparent need to let Lenny eat down gently. <laughs> Do you eat foot? <laughs> Let's check out the cemetery again. I doubt there's gonna be much here. But it doesn't hurt. It's raining now. Oh, look at that. Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could have been different. A family mausoleum. No reason to go in there. Conwell Springs. seem to be anything here either. I guess let's talk to Grandpa Grandma again. Maybe we can go upstairs now as well. Also, let's Call our dorm. Maybe our roommate has any tips. Oh, hold on. Nah, nothing like that in here. No result for that. Uh huh. Hello? Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? Too complicated to explain over the phone. I'll fill her in about it later. Oh. I'm trying to get a hold of a police report concerning Grandpa, but the cops refused to give it to me. Yep, the state laws are really strict about that sort of thing. Ugh, there must be some way to get my hands on it. Sure, but probably not within the boundaries of the law, Kathy. Am I hearing Fuck the this law? Right? Are you encouraging criminal behavior, E? Oh, I would never! Hmm. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy! Okay. Burn it down! I'm to cut down. <laughs> Call the church. That's kind of an arbitrary thing to do. Okay. 
I don't know why I would need to call the church, but... Can I go upstairs now? I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Aw. Let's see if Grandma has anything to say about this police report. Oh, hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to show her that. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. What if... Expensive-looking scotch. That thing has been standing there forever. Expensive-looking... Can, can we take it? Can we take the booze? I would like to take the booze. There. Very well. Mm. See you later, Grant. Take care. Grandma has prepared some tea for us. Get the sheriff drunk. That was, that was my idea, but they won't let us take the booze. to check if there was anything like some sort of hint function or hmm this is pretty tricky can I go to the church well it, it didn't list it as an option but it's the brochure that priest gave me at the funeral the logo stands out, but other than that, it's just the... There's also an address at the bottom. You know, if I ever feel like getting my god on. Huh. <laughs> Good old Satan. I don't think there's any way to go to that address right now. Yeah, I don't have access to my inventory when I'm here. Alright, we got our first real puzzle. Let's see if we can figure it out. Definitely something with the coffee. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. What's your... It's a find. That's all for now. Good. I go into the doors on the left. I can't while he's sitting there. Mm. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Well, gotta go. See ya. My cigarettes out on this nah, flag. I need those for self intoxication. I don't want to show him that. What's your opinion on this church? I think it's a nice enough church. Why? I don't know. The priest seemed odd. Kind of pushy. Yeah, I get your point. But I know the guy. He's harmless. If you say so. Mm. Various notices and a wanted poster. Mm. 
Not a big fan of that idea. I'm trying to cut down on the pyromania. Lots of pol- Lenny mentioned that the older reports are stored somewhere beyond those doors. Mm-hmm. Coffee cups, both used and unused. Good idea, but... It's being used. Coffee cups. This pot of coffee seems to be the only thing that I can actually, like, do anything with. <laughs> That's kind of an arbitrary thing to do. Classic adventure game stuff. I'm I'm immediately stuck already. Barely been playing this for an hour. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <laughs> if you must. Okay, nothing else. That's all for now. Good. A gold medal of some kind. Coffee cup. Mm. I can't while he's sitting there. Land of the free. Land of free, home of brave. That, that lamp is burnt out. I can't while he's sitting there. I, I would like to use there. the phone like to use the phone please I don't think that accomplishes much out of coffee use on picture on door uh, no. Drinks the coffee, but it never runs out. Can you dump it? I don't know. Oh. Why did it... Alright. Let's see how this plays out. I tried doing that, like, three times already. Why did it work out that one time? Lenny, quit loitering and make some goddamn coffee. 10-4, coming right up. Oh, it better be. Weird. I swear, I tried that like three times already, and then... Maybe you have to have gotten all the info out of Lenny? Maybe. Anyway, we are making progress. Let's see. Jail cell, mop, a bum. Rude. Uh, bulletin board, a small TV, a phone. Oh, there's so much. Okay, the police reports are what we want, but there's so much other stuff here. Maybe you have to get his opinion on the brochure? Maybe. A jail cell. Looks cramped. Yeah. If I ever feel the urge to clean, I'll know where to go. Hey, man. Hey. What? I can't hear you! I, I said hey. Hey. What? I can't hear you! What do you think about this church? I don't want to give any of my stuff to a criminal. I might not get it back. What? 
I can't hear you. <laughs> he can't hear us. No wanted posters. I'm disappointed. Thanks. That was getting annoying. Ah, okay. Hello? Hi there. So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. Oh, really? That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. Ooh, sounds rough. Okay, gotta go. See ya! <laughs> I can't get his opinion on the brochure. Alright. Uh, a note. I want to read the note. Lenny, for the last goddamn time, stop leaving the locker keys on this table. Always put them back in your desk when you're done. This phone is not here for your personal calls either. The county shouldn't have to pay for your giggly shenanigans, Sheriff. Giggly shenanigans? Uh, I just talked to Eileen, so... An axe, a sledgehammer, and some other heavy tools. Brilliant right. idea to leave those lying around next to evidence lockers and locked cells. Can I take some of this? I love heavy tools. A big red gas can with a hose. Somebody probably used that to siphon gas. I I definitely want to steal some of this some of this evidence. I want it. A computer monitor. Probably recovered stolen goods. There's no way small town cops would be that up to date with the modern world. A large evidence locker, probably for securing some of the bulkier things. A large evidence locker. Mm. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. They look sturdy enough, wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. Okay. Well, police reports done. Okay. These must be the archived police reports that Lenny was talking about. Time to start digging. Yes, found it. August 16th, 1981. Let's have a look. Okay. The individual was encountered on the side of the dirt road a few miles from Cornwell Springs, blindly walking forward with his eyes wide open. Subject was identified as Joseph Rain. He did not respond when touched or spoken to. He appeared to be dirty from head to toe and wet up to his knees. Okay. Mr. Rain was fiercely clutching a small tape recorder, complete with tape. Okay, well, that's the first we've heard of that. Being cooperative, he could be led into the squad car and transported back to town. Next day, picked up Mrs. Rain and brought her along with Mr. Rain to the emergency room at the community clinic. Upon routine inspection of the patrol car, a tape recorder was found discarded on the back seat. Found as evidence in locker five. All right, well, we need to get that tape recorder and the tape. Hmm, I'm going to have to get my hands on that recorder. Locker number five is right there, but it requires a key. According to the note on the table, the locker keys are kept in Lenny's desk. Okay. 
Well, sounds like we have a plan. Anything else to talk hey. to this guy about? Hi there. Persuade him to distract Lenny. Heck yeah. You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. <laughs> Seven. <sighs> Deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. All right. Okay, gotta go. See ya! He's so sassy. I love a smart ass. Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. All right. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. Nice. Now. Time to waste more coffee, I guess. Lenny! Coffee! Jeez Louise, already? I'll take care of it, boss. that again. Do you have anything to say about the keys? This should open the evidence locker with the tape recorder. All right. This should open. All right, got it. Nice. Can we open other things? No. Pick the phone. Note to self, remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. Mm. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. The attic. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting close to finding the source. The source. I have a promising new theory. It should be ready for a test soon. Well, yeah. Hmm. Okay. We are making progress. Hey, thanks, man. Hey. Hi there. Nothing okay. Nothing else. If I ever feel the urge to... All right. Make him progress, make him progress. Does Lenny have anything new to say, you think? Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Yeah, and I'm guessing... Sure, I'll show him the police report I stole from under his nose. I don't want to show him that. Guessing well, go. the sheriff also See doesn't you. have anything to say about this. Hello, Sheriff. <sighs> I don't need to ask him. That's what I thought. All, all right. Good. All right, back to Grandma's house. 
It was actually making progress now. Let's talk to Grandma first. Keep her informed of what we're finding out. Oh, hello, dear. Hey, Grandma, do you recognize this tape recorder? Oh, yes, Mr. Dicto. Joseph used to carry that thing with him everywhere. He could be absent-minded at times. It helped him remember things. Mr. Dicto. I got the dictaphone already. I don't think there's anything else in there I need to mention to her. Hmm. Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, dear. Be careful now. Okay. Yeah, let's turn on the light switch. If we can... There we go. Get the right pixel to click. Nothing. The bulb must be burned out. Dang it. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Okay, so we need to find a replacement light bulb now. Get the one from the lamp here. Free light bulb. Score. <laughs> Score. Standard light bulb. Looks intact and good to go. <coughs> Either this was a case of sudden kleptomania, or I actually have a good use for this thing. Alright, let's use light bulb on light bulb. There we go. Alright. A lot of stuff. Teddy bear. Mr. Bear! Oh, how did you get all the way up there? Good idea. You just keep watch. I'll do the searching. Thank you, Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear, reporting for duty. Reunited with a furry friend. Aw. That's adorable. Briefcase. Oh my god. Okay, combination lock. Okay, well, I'm not gonna just guess nope, this. That's not it. A worn office chair on wheels. I'm feeling a sudden urge to do a race. Let's go through the drawers. Empty. Look at these papers. Just some old bills. Nothing interesting. Is that an old typewriter? An old typewriter covered in cobwebs. You should keep that covered. To avoid it getting covered in cobwebs. A book? A thick book about math. Oh. Yoink. Secrets of Infinite Numbers by Arthur P. Gibson. Yellow bookmark, blue bookmark, red bookmark. Pi. Yep. <laughs> that sure is pi. Fibonacci sequence. Uh huh. Well, this might be a clue for. Uh, for the uh the briefcase lock. 
prime numbers, or it could be prime num. Okay, it could be any one of these fucking things. All right. It looks like someone was doing geometry. I can't make much sense of it. Hmm. Coffee cup. Decades old coffee. Lovely. Ugh. More drawers. Empty. An industrial sized jug of detergent. Shells. Books and office supplies. Nothing in particular catches the eye. Metal detector. An electronic metal detector. Kind of clunky for a person to lug around without a specific use for it. But... Come on, Strongbat did it. It looks like someone was doing geometry. Is that it? Okay, that is it. Well... Alas, we can't all be strong bad. All right. Well, let's try. Hold on. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Three, fourteen. Three, one, four, one, five, nine. Let's try pi. Three, one, four. What was it? Three, one, four, one, five, nine. One, five, nine. Yeah, that would have been too easy. I doubt the book alone is enough to solve this. Is worth a shot, though. One, one, two, three, five, eight. Let's try that. Three, Yeah, that would have been too easy. I doubt the book alone is enough to solve this. <laughs> it's probably not going to be, be the third one either. Two, three, five, seven, eleven. Three, five. Seven, one, one. Yeah, that would have been. Yeah. Okay. Well, we do have a new thing to talk about with Grandpa, Grandma. So let's ask her about the lock briefcase. Oh, hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I found a locked briefcase in the attic. Do you know anything about it? Oh, that old thing? Joseph said there were just some old boring Air Force papers in there. If that was the case, why use an intricate combination lock? That's a very good question, dear. In any case, I wouldn't know how to open it. Could force it open. I found this book in the attic. Recognize it? Oh, yes. I bought it for Joseph's birthday once. He was always fascinated by numbers. He believed that math could explain everything in this world. He was a man of science. There's no denying that. Hmm. Hey, Grandma, do you reckon? Oh, yeah, he could be. Maybe.
baby. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. Maybe there's a clue on the tape recorder. Oh, let's rewind. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting close to finding the source. I have a promising new theory. It should be ready for a test soon. Hmm. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been I just with Shani. Anyway, I'm getting I have Three red roses, a blue violet, and and two yellow tulips. Or three yellow tulips. Hmm. Two red roses, a blue violet, and three yellow tulips. That's got to be it, right? Let's try. Okay, let's listen to it again just to be sure. Note yourself. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses. I've been working on three red roses. Okay. See, I have a shit memory. Three red roses, so two, three, five. Two, three, five is already there. A blue violet. So that's one. And yes, there we are. Nice, nice, nice. An envelope. Anything else? Nothing? Hey. Let's see what's in here. There were two pictures, a newspaper clipping, a key, and a tape inside. Oh-ho! Oh, and a single copper penny, too, for some reason. Nice. All right, we got our inventory full of a bunch of crap. I, I love that. That's my favorite thing to have in an adventure game is a bunch of crap in my inventory. Maybe that sounded sarcastic. I'm being 100% genuine here. It's, it's the best feeling. Hey, we have a tape. Let's leave that for last. Have a look Looks at this so picture. Exposed. I can't make much out. I think I see trees in the background, but most of the picture is just bright white. There's probably some way to enhance this back at school. Mm. I'll figure it out tomorrow when I'm back. Zoom in, enhance. Grandpa in uniform with two other men. Something is handwritten on the back. Flight training. McConnell Air Force Base, 1941. Hmm, okay. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. Mm. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, a teenage girl found dead near Conwell Lake. The girl is survived by her mother, father, and younger brother. The funeral service will be held at Conwell Cemetery on the 21st of July. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. Tragic story. I wonder why Grandpa saved this. 
Drown teen girl. Hmm. We might have to go back to the cemetery and find the grave of that particular girl. A key, huh? It's a small key. Fairly modern design. No identifying tag, unfortunately. Okay. It's the penny I found in the briefcase. Looks like it was minted the same year I was born. Okay. Grandpa and me, we had this game where he would hide pennies around the house and I would go on a treasure hunt. Huh. Never in the attic, though. I thought it was too scary up there. Hmm. Okay. Well? The tape I found in the briefcase, labeled Answering Machine. It should play fine in Mr. Dicto. Answering Machine. The tape Grandpa had on him when he was found in 81, labeled Investigation. Well, listen to the answering machine. Let's rewind. Okay. You've reached the rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. Huh. We're never coming back. Oh, that's our mom, Don't isn't call. it? Don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. Cocky. It happened to me, too. It what? You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm. I wonder who this Cocky is. Well, that's all highly suspicious. Okay. Okay, okay. We got a we got a lot of stuff to investigate now. I love that. Drowned girl. They said they found Grandpa wandering around, and he was, like, soaked up to his waist. I was- I wonder if he was, like, searching for that drowned girl or something. Like, in a lake. Let's talk to Grandma. See if she has anything to say about all this stuff. Oh, hello. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. Lots of stuff to show her. Can you tell me anything about McConnell Air Force Base? It's not very far from Conwell Springs. Joseph was stationed there for some time during the war. I believe they're still training young pilots there today. So when did Grandpa enlist in the Air Force? Oh, it was barely past the honeymoon when Joseph left to fight in that terrible war. Together with his best friend Charles and my brother Andrew. Hey, okay, Charles. Those were nerve-wracking years. I was so worried I thought I would burst. Every short visit from Joseph was a joy. But he kept going back to the front, to my great dismay. When I told Joseph about being pregnant with your father, he finally realized that enough was enough. He had done his duty. Shortly thereafter, he returned to a quiet farmer's life in this very house, helping your great-grandfather with the crops until he passed. Mm. Okay, so the Charles on the first answering machine message, that's uh, old war buddy. Do you know anything about a young girl drowning around here? Oh, yes was the saddest thing. She was only 16. Oof. We never really knew the family. 
they prefer to keep to themselves. Do you remember the name of the girl or her family? I'm awfully sorry, dear. I, I just can't recall. That's okay, Grandma. I was just wondering why Grandpa would have wanted to save this. Joseph was always affected by the tragedy of others. Perhaps he wanted to do something for the family. In any case, he didn't speak to me about it. Cocky. Does the nickname Cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call signs Joseph ah. and his friends gave one another. Joseph was vigilante. I can't count the number of times he got into trouble for breaking the rules. To this day, I have no idea how he always managed to land on his feet. <laughs> Must be hereditary, given the things I've gotten away with. Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm not in jail. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad, dear. But to get back to the subject, you don't have any idea of who this cocky is? I'm afraid not, but the Air Force might be a good place to start. Hmm. Cocky call sign? Possibly another old war buddy. See you later, Grams. Uh, Take oops. care, dear. No. There are a few Didn't want to leave. I want to wanna still show. Very well, dear. I want to still show Grandma all this other stuff. Hey, Grandma, do you. Re oh, yeah. He could be absent. Okay. I don't think we need to discuss that anymore. Okay. Oh, yeah. He was. He was. Discuss the math book. Picture. Grams, can you tell me anything about this picture? It looks awfully bright. Perhaps something was wrong with the camera. Yeah, maybe. I should try to figure something out tomorrow at the university. Soldiers? Look at this photo I found in the locked briefcase. Goodness. I haven't seen that picture in years. This was taken when Joseph was stationed at McConnell Air Force Base. That's him right there on the left. What about the other two? I don't remember the name of the smiling man in the back. Mm. The gentleman on the right was Joseph's best friend, Charles Wade. Charles Wade. Okay. And that other guy is probably Hockey Dunn. Do you know anything about this story, Grandma? Not much, dear. It was, we never really knew the family. Do you remember their... I'm awfully sorry. That's quite all. Joseph was always deeply affected in any... Okay. Okay, that's just the same as asking about the drowned girl. What's this key for? Do you recognize this key, Grandma? I found it in the attic. I'm afraid not, dear. Hmm. Does this coin mean anything to you, Grandma? I'm afraid not, dear. Okay. Tell me about Charles Wade. What can you tell me about Charles Wade? Well... I do know he has made quite a name for himself since he and Joseph went to war together. Apparently, he came up with some brilliant piece of engineering for the airplanes. They use it everywhere now. Okay. Any idea how to get in touch with him? I'm afraid not, dear. I haven't seen him for years. He and Joseph grew apart before you were born. Any particular reason for that? Oh... Uh, not that I know of. Mm, okay. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. All right, well, we've got lots of things to check out now, don't we? Okay, so we probably want to go to the Air Force Base. But also... We might be able to find the tombstone that belongs to this young girl who drowned. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday, the girl is survived by her mother, father, and young. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. July 15th, 1975. Maybe we can find that particular grave. Can we call anyone? All right, got it. OK. 
Okay, we got the number for McConnell Air Force Base. Nah, nothing like that in here. Nope, couldn't find it. Charles Wade. Damn, no Charles Wade in here. Was worth a shot, but being rich and famous and all, I guess he's got a hidden number. Hmm. No hit for Wade Industries either, but it was kind of a long shot for them to have an office in this small county anyway. I should try to get a hold of him some other way. Okay. Let's try calling Connell Air Force Base. McConnell Air Force Base, how can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. All right. Uh... Well, let's just go down the list. Do you know anything about what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? I know that he was no longer stationed here at the base at that time. He'd left the Air Force decades earlier. But as a Conwell Springs citizen, sure, I've heard the rumors just like everybody else. How he was found by the sheriff, all messed up, walking out of the woods with some kind of unexplained brain damage. Any theory as to what he was doing out there? I'm afraid not, ma'am. But I'm positive that it had nothing to do with this base or our operations here. Mm. Okay. What can you tell me about his service at McConnell? Well, Joseph Rain is a legend around here. His pile of metals weighs more than my car. All right. I was fortunate enough to meet him before he suffered his injury, and I must say, what an inspiring man. Wow, everybody loves Grandpa. That he would have made general if he'd stuck around. Any idea of why he quit? He looks so happy in the pictures from the war. Oh, your family, ma'am? Granddaughter. Well, then I'm sorry for your loss. I heard about his recent passing. Appreciate it, buddy. So, about him quitting. I shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but some say the war broke him. PTSD. Yeah, hey, yeah, I'm the so war will do that to you. swore about him like he wasn't afraid of anything. Maybe it was his guilt. He ended a lot of lives, but that's just me speculating. Gotcha. Thanks for the thoughts. Okay. What can you tell me about McConnell Air Force Base? This is one of the oldest Air Force bases in the U.S., established during World War I. Okay. The main purpose of it is to train fighter pilots. The McConnell Flight School is well-renowned all around the country. In the late 80s, the school started accepting a limited number of civilian applicants due to the high demand. Some okay. of the most famous dogfighters in U.S. history, such as Ethan Fireball Jenkins, Joseph Vigilante Rain, and Brett Xavier Myers trained at this very base. Okay. Charles Wade Some call, call signs too. there. Some claim that many of his revolutionary ideas came from the former chief mechanic here, the late Niles Bloom. Niles Bloom. Interesting. Thanks for the history lesson. Niles Bloom, huh? I don't see a reason to ask him about that. Okay. Do you recognize the aviator call sign, Cocky? Afraid not, ma'am. I know all the call signs here, and I'm positive it's not one of them. Hmm. This isn't current, though. It might have been used as early as World War II. Oh, that's unfortunate. We don't keep any official records of call signs. The only option I can think of is to get a hold of somebody who was around back then. Any suggestions? The only person I can think of who is still alive would be Charles Wade. The billionaire? He was stationed at McConnell? Billionaire, huh? up until the point when he founded Wade Industries in the 60s. Wade Industries. Billionaire. Okay. I'm trying to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. He has explicitly asked us not to provide his contact details to anyone. Is there any way you could make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. Can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. Hmm. But what if it was a matter of life and death? Ma'am, if you're in a life-threatening situation, I suggest you call 911. Hmm, dear. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm no, we... from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Nice try. You know what caller ID is? Can clearly see that you're not calling from the station. I already told him that I was <laughs> Joseph's granddaughter, yeah, I can't so. Pull it off if I call from here. 
Okay, so maybe if I call them from the police station, that'll work. Let's see. Um... Well, let's take a short break here. I'm gonna get a sandwich and some of the drink. Um, and after that, I'm gonna head over to the cemetery and see if we can find where that drowned girl is buried. Let me just save my game here. Uh, who's cocky? Okay. Uh, right, be right back.
Your eyes have never been so bright Radiating through the night And they burn in you My heart has always tended to be blue Though I think it's strange but true I think I'm finding I'm in love with you But my southern heart is rusted in its place And all your shadow stars won't fill your outer space But if you rely on me, I'll let my world remain in you Just promise all you say is true Say is true. She keeps a moe chandel in a pretty cabinet. Let them eat cake, she says, just like Marie Antoinette. A building, a remedy for Khrushchev and Kennedy. And anytime an invitation you can take care. Caviar and cigarettes, well, there's an etiquette. Extraordinarily nice. She's a killer, queen, gunpowder, gelatine, dynamite with a laser beam. And what did to blow your mind? Anytime. Recommended at the price, insatiable and appetite. Wanna try? Complications. She never kept the same address. In conversation, she spoke just like a baronet. Fastidious and precise. She's a killer, queen, gunpowder, gelatine, dynamite with a laser beam, and guaranteed to blow your mind
Throughout my studies for eternal life and Now I've found somebody who can share that secret In exchange for labor Curiosity Only killed a couple cats And who among us can't admit that that's so low He wants some dubious favors I will just repeat My philosophy When times are tough Then they just get tougher You feel like you don't have any other recourse But to wait till the end is in your view so you grit your teeth and you keep on going the distance left I'm all right left knowing that holding on is all that I can do Cause if I make it to October I'll be fine cause it'll all be over soon I'm no fool and quiet, the perceptive individual, and I have started waking up in places I can't quite remember going. Boss says not to worry, so I can't because it's all according to his master plan, but his plan I should have started out knowing. But it's too late now, I couldn't stop it anyhow. When times are tough and they just get tougher, you feel like you don't have any other recourse but to wait till the end is in your view. So you grit your teeth and you keep on going the distance left, I'm all right left, knowing that holding on is all that I can do. Cause if I make it to October, I'll be fine cause it'll all be over soon. I don't think I can keep my optimistic disposition. Maybe eating spiders has no basis in nutrition Cause yesterday I killed someone without knowing the purpose But with my theories right it means that none of this was worth it All the groveling and laboring and animal abuse All for a plan that in my arrogance I hadn't yet to do So this is my confession If I may leave one last impression When times are tough and they just get tougher You feel like you don't have any other recourse But to wait till the end is in your view so you grit your teeth and you keep on going the distance left, I'm all right left, knowing that holding on is all that I can do. Cause if I make it to October, I'll be fine, cause it'll all be over soon. 
Had a sandwich, had a drink, feeling much refreshed. Okay. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff to do. Thank you, Emmy. Um, I think first I want to check out the, the cemetery one more time. See if we can uh, find the grave of that drowned girl and see if we can't get a specific name. Okay. Now, let's see here. Newspaper clipping. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, the girl is survived yeah, 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 by her yeah, mother. Yeah. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. Okay. July 15th, 1975. So, let's see if we can find a tombstone that matches that date. 86. 81 79 hold on and Blackwell is that a reference to the Blackwell games it might well be I should play those on stream those are those are great games I've only played the first two and I didn't finish the second one, so that might be really fun to play on stream sometime. Anyway. 89. 94. 1980. Oh, there's some sort of child here. 1992. Who is this? All right, this is the right date. Looks yeah. like her name was Lily Myers. Lily Myers. She's to get a hold of her family. Okay. I wonder what that kid is doing here all alone. Okay. Touching grass, I guess. Hey, kid. Hi, yourself. <laughs> what are you doing? None of your business. Huh. I like you, kid. You're not here alone, right? Where's your mom? Oh, she's around. Alright. Like where? I don't see her. Is she a ghost? You must be blind or something. I'll go look for your mom, okay? Don't go anywhere. Whatever. Yeah, that's the that's the impression I'm getting is that his mom is in one of these graves. I should go look for his mother. Grandpa. Elizabeth Parker. I think that's I think that's like Peter Parker's mom or something. I might be wrong though. Mitchell. A family mausoleum. It says price. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. No reason to go in there. There might be a reason to go in there eventually, though. Okay, uh... Well, 
I don't see any moms around. Oh. Kid? Was the kid a ghost? Guess he found his mom. So that was definitely a ghost. Spooky. A ghost. Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could have been different. Zoinks like wow, Scoob. Okay. So we have a name for the drowned girl now. I think the next thing we can do to make progress is go to the police station and uh, call the Air Force Base from there in order to find out more information about Charles Wade. But first, I want to go back to Grandma's house. I want to see if we can look up a phone number for the family of that drowned girl, maybe. Lily Myers. She's been dead for two decades. I could try to find someone in her family, but I'll need a full name. Mm. Okay. Not enough information just yet. So... Let's ask Grandma. Oh, hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I found out that the drowned girl's name was Lily Myers. Ring a bell? Oh, yes. Oh, how could I forget? Sue, Jack, oh, and their children, Lily and Nathan. Okay. Do they still live around here? Mother and son do. I, I see them in town from time to time. They live somewhere near the lake. Okay. But not the father. No. He disappeared not long after Lily took her own life. Oh, wow, dear. she killed herself. That's news to me. Oh, that girl had been troubled for years. Truman made an official statement later. It was no accident. I see. Do you know how I can reach the family? Not really, dear. Like I said, they tend to keep to themselves. Okay. Well, we do have some s specific names now, so... Is this gonna just repeat dialogue? I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Okay. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Okay. Let's see if we can find the Myers family in the phone book. All right, found an address. Okay. We found an address, but not a phone number? No. Let's talk to our roommate again, and then we can go to the police station. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? Lots of stuff. I don't need to ask her about that. Okay. I don't need to ask her about that. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to find this guy, but all I have is his nickname, Cocky. Well, what do you know about the guy? Not much. I think he was in the Air Force and served with Grandpa. Maybe you could try to find somebody in the Air Force who knew him then? Yeah, that might be worth a shot. I mean, that was... That's what I was going to do anyway. Hi there, why shike? Thank you for joining us today. I'm trying to contact Charles Wade. You know the industrialist? Wow, really? Why? It's complicated, but he knew Grandpa back in the day. They went to war together. Huh. Must be super hard to get in touch with a person like that. Uh, yeah, I'm finding that out. 
Yeah, I think I have a plan, though. If he used to serve with your granddad, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Could be worth a shot. Okay, so what I'm getting from this is that calling my roommate is just, like, for getting hints on what to do. I don't need to ask her about that. Okay, well, that's pretty clear. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. I'm doing all right, Oi Shake. Doing pretty good today. I'm enjoying this game. Um. Okay. Well, let's head over to the police station. Oh, and we have a new location, Lakeside Cabin. That's where the Myers family is. But. Let's try and get a hold of Charles Wade first. So, over to the police station. We gotta distract that cop. Oh, the soundtrack. Okay, we gotta distract that cop, and then we can uh, place a call from here, maybe. I can't while he's sitting there. Also, maybe we can talk to him about some of the infra of the inf bleh, some of the information that we found. Hey, Lenny. Can't talk Hello, today. Kathy. What's up? Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Okay. <laughs> He's not interested in that. Hey, Lenny, could you check the files for a police report? A girl who drowned around here, Lily Myers. I'd love to help, Kathy, but you better check with the sheriff first. Uh huh. Fine, I'll do that. Maybe I'll just pull the same trick as before and have a, have a look myself. I'm from the Netherlands. Oh, I shake. I'm uh, I'm in Europe. Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Hey. What's your opinion on Charles Wade? He's okay in my book. Invested a lot in the local community over the years. He's been a prominent figure in town for as long as I can remember. Okay, what about the Myers Do you family? Know the Myers family? Supposed to live somewhere near the lake. Aren't they the ones whose daughter drowned a long time ago? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Might recognize them if I saw them, but that's about it. Okay, well, that's not really anything useful. Well, gotta go. See ya. See ya. Let's talk to the sheriff as well. Oh, I doubt they're going to be much help. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <sighs> if you must. I don't need to ask him that. Okay. Do you know anything about a drowning here in 1975? Young girl named Lily Myers? That case was handled by Truman. I wasn't involved. Could I have a look at that report? You have a memory problem? Ugh, <sighs> fine. Hey, listen, it's fine. I have my ways. I'll get a hold of that report somehow. I don't need to ask him that. Hmm. <clears throat> What's your opinion on Charles Wade? There's a lot of people in town with their noses up that man's ass, that's for sure. That's Gross. So? Care to elaborate? <laughs> Just another rich bastard doing what he does. They even renamed Main Street to Wade Street a few months back. <laughs> what a goddamn joke. Okay. I don't need to ask him that. All right. Well, as I thought, That's this guy's now. completely useless Good. to us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you not hear me? Is my is my mic audio being picked up okay? Well, these guys are useless, so let me pull my little trick here. Can you hear me fine? Okay, that's good. Okay, let's pull our little trick here and sneak right in. 
I'll just have a look at the police reports. My own damn self. I'm from the Netherlands. Okay, oh, I shake. I already told you that. In here about Lily Meyer's death. Okay, what do we have here? All right. Let's see here. Emergency services are called by a resident near Cornwall Lake who reports a young female, approximately 16 years old, has been found dead, floating in the water, presumably drowned in the lake. The soundtrack. The drums. Officers arrive at the scene. EMT is en route. Delayed by fog, the body is fully clothed and there are no apparent signs of foul play. Incident declared as a likely accident. Uh... I'm gonna go ahead and just... Oop. You're, you're, you're being weird, dude. You're being a weirdo. And I ha have a feeling that they were going to end up soliciting me for, like, some sort of commission thing. Because I've gotten, like, six of these before, so. Anyway. <laughs> back to the game. This happens every time. Because I have, like, PNG tuber or NV tuber uh, in my tags, and they're like, ooh, I can, I can sell them a some sort of VTuber commission or something. But I'm quite happy with my current setup, so, you know. Anyway. Uh, bodies fully closed. There are no apparent signs of foul play. Incidents declared likely accident. The sweep of the re residence reveals a suicide note mashing victim's handwriting. Witnesses report earlier mental health problems. EMT finally arrives. The girl is declared dead by medical personnel and transported to the city morgue. Hmm. Okay. Took him quite a while to get there. Though, I, I, I guess if she's already dead, then there's not no big hurry. But still, that's uh, quite a while. Coroner's report received. Cause of death is determined to be drowning. No exterior signs of struggle. Suicide confirmed. Okay. So she drowned herself. Hmm. Looks like somebody did a Virginia Wolf. Oof. I wonder if there's more to it. I mean, there has to be, right? Otherwise, why would Grandpa be investigating? An axe, a sledgehammer, and some other heavy tools. Brilliant idea to leave those lying around next to evidence lockers and locked cells. I would love to get some of these tools in my inventory. Um, let's see. Can we use the phone here? Yeah, baby. Let's call the Air Force Base. Air Force Base, how can I help you? Hi, I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. Hey? I don't see a reason to ask him about that. Yeah, didn't think so either. I don't see a reason to ask him about that. Charles Wade, though. I'm trying to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. Uh-huh. 
he has explicitly I'm a police officer, though. I'm calling from the police station. Is there any way you can make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. No can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. Uh, well, about that. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm calling from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Hmm. I can see that you're actually calling from the station. You say you're a cop? You don't sound like a cop. Uh. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It's just because I'm a woman, right? Women don't belong in law enforcement? Is that what you're saying? That's so sexist. Now that's hardly what... Do you have any idea what I have to go through every day? Nobody takes me seriously. The dirty looks, the sexual innuendos, I've... Relax, okay? I'll check the files. It's 555 <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay. Now we have a phone number for the Wade residence. Wade residence? Hi, this is Kathy Rain. I'm calling for Charles Wade. He doesn't live here anymore. What's this about? What do you want with my father? I'd just like to have a quick word with Mr. Wade. It's about my grandfather, Joseph Rain. You're 20 years late, girl. My father has neither time nor energy to deal with you people. You people? But this conversation is over. Unless my father explicitly says he wants to talk to you, it's not going to happen. Hmm. What a stuck-up, overclass witch. <laughs> Well, she hasn't heard the last from me. I'm going to talk to that old man one way or another. Okay. Talk to that old man. All right. Well, let us... Let's head over to the Myers residence for a probably really awkward conversation. Um, actually, before I do that, I want to shove all my items in this guy's face and see if he has anything hey, to say about him. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Probably not, but, you know, it's, it's worth a shot, right? I don't want to show him that. Yeah, I stole that. I don't want to show him that. I don't want to show him that. Okay. I don't want to... Hey, Lenny, do you recognize these men? Hey. Not really. Sorry. Okay. I don't want to show him that. I probably shouldn't. He might ask where I got it from. Well, it's mine. I mean, it was my grandma grandpa's. So, I don't know why we should hide that. Well, anyway. I don't want to show him that. Sure, I'll show him the police report I... Okay. Nothing useful well, here. See ya. Talk to the sheriff. Probably nothing useful from that either. What? I want to be sheriff, thorough. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <sighs> if you must. I don't want to show him that. I don't want. I don't want. He's new in town. I don't think he knows those men. I don't want. I probably should. I don't want to show. Sure. Okay, nothing useful. That's all for now. Good. Is it just me, or is this plant looking uh, a little worse for wear now that we've poured a, bu a bunch of coffee into it? Uh-oh. I think it's time to switch to decaf. <laughs> that's, that's a fun little detail.
Okay, time to head over to the Myers cabin. Ooh, spooky music. Thick, dense forest. What were you doing out there, Grandpa? Lake? Conwell Lake, where Lily Myers met her demise. Looks like there's a small dock with a couple of boats. I don't have a reason to go down there. Okay. Cigarette butts. There's a ton of discarded cigarette butts. Somebody around here is a chain smoker. We have something in common. Good to know. All right. Fifty-five degrees. Not too chilly, thankfully. I can see someone moving inside. Okay, so they're home at least. Catmobile. Okay. Yes? Can I help you? I hope so. My name's Rain. Kathy Rain. Joseph's girl. The one they sent away. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Mm. Well, what do you want? I had some questions about your daughter, Lily. Well, you know what? I don't have any answers, girl. Lily was precious, special. Lily died. That's all there is to it. My grandfather came to see you, right? To ask about her? Maybe he did. I don't see how that's any of your business. I'm not asking for much, Mrs. Myers. Then clearly, you have no idea what it's like losing a child. Goodbye. Yeah, well, that, that makes sense. That's a pretty reasonable reaction, I feel. My smoke's about a half a pack. As half as the smoke. Having a smoke. <laughs> I like that we could just do that. Huh, you again. Okay. Uh, one. Oh. Won't you ever give up? Nope. I'm not leaving until I get some answers. I'm still here and I will be until you agree to talk to me. I'm still here and will be until you agree to talk to me. Enjoy a night curled up in the leaves, then. This is a pretty rude thing of us to do. Just go away. 55 degrees. Not too chilly, thankfully. Stop it! Let's let's have us a smoke. Aw. You want it? oh. Huh. <laughs> you want a smoke? Care to join me for a smoke, Mrs. Myers? Well, um, I'm gonna have to think about it. Alright. Well, I suppose one smoke can hurt. Alright. Bonded over. Cigarettes. And that's when he realized it was his own bong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh, now that. Oh, we're friends good. now. <laughs> you know what, Kathy? You're okay. Sorry for being such a cranky old bag before. I get a short fuse when I run out of smokes. Now that's an understatement. Good thing I had my morning smoke, otherwise, we would have had a fist fight on our hands. <laughs> oh, it's getting chilly. Why don't we head inside? Mm.
Now, this here's my boy, Nathan. He's special. Nate, be polite and say hello to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi there, big guy. All right. Worried about some questionable, questionable depictions of neurodiversity here. This always happens when someone says, like, oh, they're special, quote unquote. But lots of stuff to check out here. Nice view of the lake from here. An owl. Very lifelike. Contrary to popular belief, I don't believe the owls are more than what they seem. Yet another burial ground for those sweet, addictive, not to mention cancer-inducing sticks of tobacco. I'm a huge fan. You're so cool, Kathy. Nice painting. It's signed L.M. Mm, antlers. Elk, by the looks of it, they're fairly common in Conwell Woods. Stove? I can smell something cooking. Okay. Let's talk to Nathan, I guess. What you doing, big fella? Drawing. Oh yeah? What are you drawing? The nice red man. You mean Santa? No! The nice red man! Now what did I say about raising your voice at strangers? Sorry, Mama. I'll be nice. The red man is nice. Don't R mind him. Red man. He gets so absorbed in his drawings thanks to that wild imagination of his. Just like his sister. Nah, he's stuck in his own little world. Alright. Well, let's go talk to Sue, I suppose. So, you wanted to ask me about Lily? Yeah. Do you mind telling me what happened when my grandfather came to see you? Well, he knocked on my door a few years after Lily had passed away. I didn't know Joseph too well myself, but I'd heard of him and the good he'd done for the other people around here. So I let him in. He started asking a bunch of questions about Lily, like if I was absolutely sure that she, that it was suicide. Mm. And what did you say? The truth that she was depressed and, and had been for a long time. I had no doubts about what happened. Aww. Hmm. All right, anything else? Well, he was weirdly curious about her paintings. Lily painted? Yep, that's one of hers right there on the wall. Oh. See, it's beautiful. So in what way was he curious? He asked if Lily had painted anything odd or strange. I didn't really get what he was after, but I, I let him have a look at her work. He spent some time browsing through them, and then he wrote something down on a piece of paper, thanked me, and left. Huh. Any idea of what he could have seen? Hmm. Not really. I had the paintings all lined up. Could have been any of them. Would you mind showing them to me? Well, I would if I could, but this is the only one I have left. I sold the rest many years ago to this weirdo art collector. Art collector, huh? Interesting. Okay, well, we have a shit ton of stuff to talk about, so... Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather? How he ended up in a wheelchair? Stroke, wasn't it? At least that's what I heard. Not necessarily. There are some... divided opinions about it. Now that I think about it, that whole ordeal happened to him not long after he came here. How long? A week, maybe, at the most. Mm, definitely connected. I don't need to ask her about that. Mind telling me what Lily was like, Sue? I'd be happy to. She was Nathan's older sister by two years. Lily was like any girl growing up, normal. Happy, talking about school, boys, and whatnot. And she and Nathan were close back then, always playing together in the woods. When Lily was 10, she started drawing, always doodling on just about anything she could get her hands on. 
We didn't have much, really, and so she used what she could. Once I even caught her scribbling on toilet paper. <laughs> on her 12th birthday, we gave Lily a thick sketchbook with an assortment of pencils. She was ecstatic. That was the happiest I'd ever seen her. Aww. From that day, drawing became her life. Eventually, her art teacher at school helped her to get started with oil painting. When Lily was 15, something changed. At first, I thought it was just usual teen angst, but no, this was something different. She started going out, disappearing for long periods of time. She locked herself in when painting. She never used to do that. I tried everything. Counseling, support groups, antidepressants, nothing worked. Mm. About a year later, she just gave up. And well, you know the rest. That's I'm sad. sorry, Sue. That must have been unimaginable. Thanks, darling, but it's been a while now. I've learned to live with it. You know, I've been through something similar. My mom. She never killed herself, but, well, she came close. That's a damn shame. I heard about her problems. Is she doing any better now? Better isn't the word I'd use. I had to put her in a place where she couldn't hurt anyone, including herself. Yeah, life ain't easy for any of us. Flip a few coins along the way, and I could have ended up somewhere like that myself. I'm awfully sorry things went that way for you, Ma. Anyhow. Thanks, Sue. Taking it one step at a time. Hey? I don't need to ask her about that. All right, pretty clear. Does the name Charles Wade mean anything to you? Oh, he's some big-time businessman, ain't he? Yeah, he owns a large company. That about sums up what I know about the fella. Okay. What do you do to support the two of you? Uh, a little bit of this and that. Got me some cash saved up, too. Nathan helps out when he can. What happened to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? You could say he didn't quite cope as well as I did with what happened to Lily. He got himself a death wish after what happened to her, started drinking and getting into all sorts of trouble. Five years left for him in the joint now. Been there for 15. Mm, in prison. Yeah, that must be rough for you. Oh, we're doing just fine without him, aren't we, Nate? Mama takes good care of us. Mama sure does. Okay. What about this art collector? Tell me about this art collector person. Rich? fancy looking in his 50s or thereabouts i'd say he'd be around 70 now if he's still alive mm. he knocked on that door one day with a wad of cash in his hand five thousand dollars wow he wanted everything that lily so much as touched with a brush huh did he say why nope but i got the feeling that most of that dough was paid so he could avoid any questions i took the money i still had nathan to support did the stranger give you his name? No. Well, his face was far from forgettable, though. Big nose, bright blue eyes, looked black Irish. He had a thick black mane, turning gray, no beard. Hmm. All right, Sue. Thanks. Hey. So, tell me about Lily's art. It used to be about cheerful things. Landscapes, animals, bright colors. But as she drifted further into depression, she started painting horrible things. Death and decay. Mm. And the last few pieces looked like something out of a nightmare. That's awful. Oof. Did Lily ever get any recognition for her art? Not really. Except from the guy I told you about who bought most of her paintings. Okay. Well... Let's go down the list here. Yeah, I was pretty tempted before, but I think we're past that now. It was fun the last time, but nah. No reason to show her that. What do you think about this church? It's a good church. I go there from time to time. I bring Nate, too, when that boy needs the fear of God put into him. Ugh. Hate that. No reason to show her that. No reason to sh no reason no reason no reason Hey Sue, do you recognize any of these men? Well, 
There's Joseph Rain. <laughs> Always so handsome. I had such a crush on him back in the day. <laughs> and... No way. That's him. The man who bought the paintings. He's, he's much younger. He, oh, he's shit. He's mistaken that hair and nose. Ho, ho. Are you sure? I'm positive, little cat. That's the guy who walked into this cabin with five grand in cash. That's very helpful, Sue. Thanks. Ugh. Another question for the elusive Mr. Wade. All right. We got, uh... We got some progress here. I'd rather just ask her about her daughter directly. Do you know what this key opens? Well, that's a bit of a weird question, ain't it? But no. <laughs> it is a weird question. No reason to show her that. I'd rather just ask her about her daughter directly. Okay. Uh... All right. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime. It's getting late. I should head back to the city. Okay, I guess I guess we're done here. Hoping to ask Nate a couple things, but the game was just like, "You're done here. Time to move on." Hi, Arumi. Hey, you're still up. I was wondering when you'd show up. How did it go? Long story. I found out about some stuff that happened when I was a kid. Wow, what a mystery. So what's the plan now? Crap, I'm still gone. And nothing I can do to change this besides it's all dead ends anyway. I don't know yet, but I'll figure something out. Some shut eye is the plan. I'm about to pass out. I don't know yet, but I'll figure something out. What about this Charles Wade? You still haven't talked to him? Yeah, I know. And that strange bright picture you showed me? Those tapes? Listen, I know this guy. Eileen, relax. We can talk about it tomorrow, okay? Oh, it's way too late now. No, I couldn't possibly sleep now. I'm way too excited. You're well, that makes way too invested in, in this, Eileen. This is none of your yeah. business. Hey, Kathy, wake up! Ugh, you are so lucky there are no sharp objects near this bed. Guess what? I got an idea. Please tell me it involves you taking a sabbatical. Huh. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> so you found all this evidence, right? Pictures, tapes, and stuff? I guess. Why? Well, as you know, I have a computer. And I know this hacker guy, Dave. Oh, a hacker. Oh, never mind. I'll just write you a note. You go back to sleep. Seriously, Eileen, sometimes I just marvel at how your brain works. A 90s hacker. Know, right? Hacked the planet. That night, Kathy dreams. Are you sure you want to do this, Catherine? You still have time. If you think there's any chance you would change your mind. I'm sure, Doctor. Just get it out of me. But Oof. please, don't tell my mom. Oh dear. I'm sorry, but we have to do that. It's the law. Oh boy. Is it, is it a fucking teen pregnancy? Teen abortion? Oof. That's rough. It's none of her business. It's my choice to make. I have enough shit going on with her already. This would just add fuel to the fire. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. Ugh. Fine. Let's just get this over with then. Eh. Right this way. Kitty loss. Ugh, I hate that dream. Oof, it's a recurring one, huh? I guess Eileen went to class. I probably should, too. Nah. Skipping class to solve a mystery. 
Oh, what's this? Hi, cat. Feel free to use my computer while I'm away. My password is angel love, without the quotes. Oh, God. If you call my friend Dave at 555-2492, he can set you up with some software. Hey. I'll be back in a few hours, super psyched about the investigation. E. P.S. No gum on the keyboard, please. Remember the last time? What? Oh, please, like she actually uses a space bar? Shit, looks like she forgot to write down the username. Oh well, shouldn't be too hard to guess. I think it's just some combination of her first and last name. Hacker Dave. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hacker Dave, huh? Oh, can we call anybody? Let's call. Let's call our dorm room from here. Not that I don't love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Let's call Hacker Dave. Hello? Yeah. Hey, I'm Kathy. Eileen said to call you about some software. Ellie who? Eileen. Red hair, glasses, speaks so fast, her gums ache. Oh, right. I thought her name was Errol. Figured it was kind of a weird name for a girl. You must have a hearing disorder. You must have a thinking disorder. Ugh. <laughs> Burn. Uh, wow. Burn. Wow. So, uh, the software? Oh, yeah. Sweet no. burn, brah. Not really. Ugh, I knew she was full of shit. Nah, I mean, sure, I used to be able to get pirated software, but not anymore. Oh, I know. I know how to get it. And my network privileges were revoked. <laughs> Me and Clyde, the campus IT guy, don't really see eye to eye. We used to play bocce together, and let's just say he is one sore loser. All right. You're such a poser. Can't you just patch things up with the guy? No way. He's such an ass. He even thinks TNG is better than the original series. He's right. He thinks the what is better than the what? I know, right? Can you believe that guy? Can't you just hack your way back in somehow? Isn't that what you do? port in my room. I don't even have physical access. <laughs> don't you ever leave your room? Use a computer in the library or something. Aren't they connected to the network? No, there are cameras in there. Clyde is just waiting for me to make a move so he can get me expelled. You call yourself a hacker? Just use your brain for Christ's sake. Let's figure this out. Wow, you're so sassy, Nancy Drew. Well, okay, only an admin account can change the access port. The only way to even theoretically crack one would be if Clyde logged on to a machine to which we have unrestricted physical access. And... Ooh, I got an idea. I'm not gonna like this. Well, what you could do is intentionally crash your PC. Okay. That sounds especially stupid. Well, not crash it, crash it. Just crash it a little, then call Clyde. Clyde will come over to fix it. If you're lucky, then he'll log on to the network using his admin account. Afterwards, you can use some of my tools to find and crack the password locally. Worth a shot, I guess. Okay, you can come over and set it up. No way. I have severe IBS. It just wouldn't work. Oh, same. IBS? What the hell is that? Uh, you seriously don't want to know. I'll have my buddy drop off everything you need. It's not rocket science. You do what I ask, and I'll get you some juicy software. Quid pro quo, Clarice. Ugh. Whatever, weirdo. We'll see. Well, he sure was a stereotype of a hacker. Hello? I've got mail? What's this then? Floppy. There was a floppy disk in there with a note taped to the back. It's labeled boot. Boot. One. Boot your computer using the blue floppy. Uh-huh. Two. 
use the corrupt MBR utility to crash uh -huh. the file system of the computer. Uh -huh. Take the floppy out and reboot. Yeah. Three, call Clyde at 555-8181, tell him your computer crashed, and give him the error code on the screen. He'll come over and have a look. It shouldn't take too long for him to fix. Four, now comes the crucial part. You need to somehow make him log on with his admin account. Five, reboot and retrieve the admin credentials using the blue floppy. Six, reboot and log on using Clyde's admin account. Seven, look for some kind of tool to remotely open my ethernet port. Dorm B, room eight. That's it. And remember, if you mess up somewhere, just call Clyde and he'll have to take care of it. It's his job after all. Oh boy, that's a that's a whole ass thing. That's a whole ass puzzle. Um Okay, well. My cat, feel free to use my computer while I'm away. My password is Angel Love without the quotes. If you call my friend Dave at 555 super that miss Errol Errol is her username probably. Okay. Got a microphone and RG floppy drive right in, right on the monitor itself. Nice. Blue pill OS. <laughs> KCU intranet. For security reasons, accounts are locked after four failed login attempts. Password will just feel free. My password is Angel. If you call my okay, super just Angel Love. Okay. Angel Love. Invalid. Valid. Come on, Eileen. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Mildred, huh? printer hmm let me just call hacker Dave one more time Hey, it's me again. Uh, can't douche. Makeup check, hair check. We meet again, Mr. Bear. Mm. Eileen's closet, filled to the brink. Would you look at that? Eileen schedule. There's a note for today. It's some advanced scanner thingy. Mm. Uh, honest. That movie's not out yet. She tells everyone. Well, I don't really know. I'm I'm out of username guesses already, so. Eileen's girly suitcase. Summers? I don't know. Nope. That don't work. 
Oops. Pressed the wrong button there. Well, let's try that floppy thing, I guess. E. Summers. Oh! Hey! Good job, Emmy. Floppy drive empty. Scanner, em scanner empty. Voice recording. What are we recording? Nothing. This didn't. This didn't even really matter. <laughs> One, boot your computer using the blue floppy. Two, use the corrupt MBR utility to crash the file system. Three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Unreadable floppy in drive. Let us reboot, I guess. Tundra BIOS. Check and removable devices. Floppy. Phoenix OS. Alright. Corrupt hard drive MRRB. Yes. MBR. I've actually had this happen by accident at one point. Fucking sucks. Okay. Found this boot failure. All right, we've thoroughly fucked this computer. One, boot your computer. Two, use the corrupt MBR. Three, call Clyde at 555-8181. Tell him your computer crashed and give him the error code on the screen. Four, okay. five, six, seven. That's it. Error code. Hurry up! Zero X eighty four. All right. All right. Time for some expert help. speaking how can I help you uh, uh, computer broken Hi, I need you to come and fix my roommate's computer what seems to be the problem it won't start up there's some kind of system failure with an error code on the screen probably a hard drive failure which room are you in dorm a room 5 I'll be there in a few minutes thanks all right thank you Clyde Hey, Clyde from IT. Hi, come in. Hello, Clyde from IT. My, oh my, now how did this happen? I have no idea. It was like this when I started it up this morning. Hmm, let's have a look. Deputy typing. Click, 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 click. And presto, good as new. That's perfect. Could could you try logging on real quick just to make sure it works? You go ahead. I'll wait. Uh, 
Uh, type to let's lo lock ourselves out. Invalid doesn't work. Doesn't work, Clyde. Better use your your admin password. Uh, yeah, that worked. Thanks. Oh, no problem. Let me know if you have any more trouble. Gotta get the password wrong to. Ah, I see. Right, 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 right. Shit! Right. I have to come up with a way to force him to log on. So it's not just the wrong username. I have to get the password wrong. Well, dang it. Now I have to do this whole thing again. Boot your com two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. Three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. And remember. <laughs> I can make her count really fast. Clyde again. And presto, good as new. Oh. That's perfect. Could could you try logging on real quick just I'm, to make I'm sure glad it works. skips ahead and You're like ahead. I'll wait. It speed run speed runs that, that little part. I like that. There we are. Oh, now look what I did. For crying out loud. <sighs> Let me try to log in with my account. Clickety click. Okay, everything seems to be in order. I've unlocked your account. Please, try not to break anything else. Oh, I'll try. Phase one complete. Okay, but I need to one boot your computer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six, seven. That's it. And Extract admin password. Admin gadget, okay. Just go through these steps again. One, two, you three. Call clock four. Now comes the crucial part. Five. Reboot and retrieve six. Reboot and log on using Clyde's admin account. Seven. Look for some. That's it. Okay. So we don't need to blue floppy anymore. Admin. Gadget. Welcome, Clyde. Here we are. Network settings. Scanner. Hold on. One. Boot. Two. Three. Call clock. Four. Now five. Reeb. Six. 
Seven, look for some kind of tool to remotely open my ethernet port. Dorm B, room eight. That's it. Dorm B, room eight. All right, that should do it. All right, nice. Any other rooms that I couldn't unblock? It's like, might as well try to help some people out while I'm here. Okay. Hacker Dave. Guess what? You got it? Hang on. Oh man, I could kiss you! Please don't. Figuratively, that is. I am so gonna get back at Clyde now. What are those admin credentials, by the way? Not telling, buddy. Saving those for a rainy day. Huh. I suppose this nice floppy I've prepared for you stays in my room then. Sure, then I'll just have to log back on and click that pretty little lock icon again. Now this is just emotional blackmail. Quid pro quo, Dave. Fine. <laughs> I'll have it dropped off at your room. God damn, you're like a she Clyde. A Clydeette. Ugh, huh. shut this up. Is the worst insult I have ever heard. Later, Dave. Haha, <laughs> Dave sucks. Clyde seems like a nice guy. There was a floppy disk inside. It's labeled tools. Okay. Well. Let's have a look-see. What if we just, uh... Nah, I'll leave it open. Aw. Unless Dave <laughs> pisses me off. <laughs> It's labeled tools. Hey. Not a bad idea, but I should probably switch back to Eileen's account first. Oh, okay. Can I just can I just log out? Or do I have to like re I have to really reboot, huh? Okay. E summers. Angel love tools software installed. Okay, image analyzer voice forge, drag and drop audio files to analyze. Interesting. Hold on a second. Voice recorder. Uh, dictaphone. You've reached the rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. All right. Okay. While I'm at it, let's uh port the other one as well. I did that already. Yeah, but I want to do it for the other one. I did that already. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, Kathy. Well, okay, Erica Wade, let's see if we can't motivate you to hear me out. Count 
five distinct voices separated into sections. Okay. I don't think I need to manipulate this particular voice recording. I don't think I need... Okay... You've reached the rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. Okay, interesting. Next. This is pretty cool. Let me just click some random words here and and see how this goes. I should probably greet my intended recipient first. Oh, okay. Uh Hello, Erica. I should let the recipient know who is speaking with this voice. Hello, Erica. It's... Charles. I should probably ask Erica to do something specific for Kathy Rain. Uh... I'd like... to... I think I need to mention visits just yet. Making Erica agree to have a civil conversation should be enough for now. I'd like to... I'd like to call... Kathy? Almost. Just a few more tweaks. This is very interesting. That should work. It's your father. I'll just reuse the same tape and place the modified message at the end. Hello, Erica. It's your father. Call Kathy Rain and give her what she wants. Bye. All right, the forged message should now be at the end of the original tape. Wow, that sounds ex extremely natural and not fake at all. <laughs> this is this is cool. This is a cool thing. Also, I like that the game just kind of does it. Like it makes you do some semblance of it, but then it, it does it properly after you solve that, that particular puzzle. That's pretty cool. Whoa. Why is that an error? What happened there? <gasps> what the what fuck? The hell? Calm down, Kathy. Think. Just think. It has to be some sick joke left in the program by Dave. Yeah, that must be it. He is one twisted fuck. Well, I hate that. No, thank you. No, no, thank you.
You people make me sick. I don't think I need to manipulate. Joseph, you there? It's. Mm. I don't think I need to manipulate this particular voice record. This one's fun, then. So much fun. Um, okay. Image analyzer. Um, oh, we need to use the scanner for that. Also, I want, I want to scan this picture as well. This picture is in good shape. I don't think it needs to be analyzed. But I want to see it. Okay. Hey. Okay. Right picture. Not bump. Uh, all right. Overexposure and noise detected. Please adjust filtering. Ugh, whoa. This is very strange. What the hell is that? Ball oh. lightning? I'll print the whole picture for now, but there's probably more to find. Okay. Three orbs. Three orbs, just like on the logo on the church brochure. This is fucking fascinating, is what this is. What is this? Hmm, interesting. Tilted equal equilateral ugh, a tilted equilateral triangle. That shape has to be significant somehow. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's all there is to find in this picture. Uh I don't want to print that part of the image. I do. I want That's very cool. The faking the voice message. 
I, that, that was really cool. I enjoyed that. Uh, okay. Well, let's see. Let's get this and pick the phone. Not right now. I have the forged message ready for playback. Okay. In that case, let's call the Wade residence. It's your father. Call Kathy Rain and give her what she wants. Bye. <laughs> You've reached Erica Wade. Leave a message after the beep. Hi, Erica. This is Kathy Rain. I spoke to your father. He asked me to get in touch with you and said he would call ahead. You can reach me at 555-8352. Bye. All right. Oh, hello there, Mildred. Hi yourself, Agatha. What? How'd you... Oh, oh shit. I know your social security number, too. You what? Oh, God. Soon you'll start stealing my clothes and then walk around and then pretending to be me. Who says I haven't done that already? Uh, what is wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, I admit, that's pretty funny. So, anyway, how did things go with Dave? Pretty good. I had to sabotage your computer. You had to what? Love Agatha oh, Christie. Cloudy. It was just a tiny little thing. I just needed an excuse for the IT guy to come by so I could steal his password. Clyde? But he's so nice. Why do you want to steal his password? It's a long story. And then I used Mr. Wade's synthesized voice to craft this fake message, which I left on her answering machine. Now that's some out of the box thinking. Yep, just might be silly enough to work. Yeah, anyhow, feel free to keep using my computer. I need to do some homework anyway. Sounds good. I'm sure I found everything in the picture of those lights, but I have a nagging feeling that they're connected to something I found yesterday. Yeah. I know. I know what it's connected to. Oh, actually, let, let's get the printout here. I'll just get rid of the original picture now, since I have the restored version anyway. Strange. Now that I look at them, the lights remind me of something I picked up yesterday. Yeah, it's the church logo. A printed picture of the strange smoky lights. It appears to have been taken somewhere in Conwell Woods. Now that I look at them, it's a bright red flower of some kind. Could be a long shot, but I've never seen a flower like that. Maybe finding out more about where it grows could narrow down where the picture was taken. Hmm. Wow, the church logo looks pretty similar to the smoky lights. I might have to visit them after all. All right. Hey, E, come check this out. Hmm? Wow, they're hypnotic. Looks like a will-o'-the-wisp. You know, the spirit of the forest. Now that's just silly, Eileen. There has to be a more reasonable explanation for them. Hey, there's nothing silly about forest spirits. You should talk to Meadow, my Wiccan friend. She's really opened my eyes about these sort of things. I thought you were Christian. <laughs> Isn't that the same Meadow who had an intimate relationship with the tree outside her dorm? You know, good for her, honestly.
Isn't it your Christian duty to consider people like her to be heathens? Oh, I doubt she could ever be more of a heathen than you are. Huh. I guess you've got a point. So, anyway, is there anything I can do to help? Well, my side of the room is starting to get a bit messy. There's always that. Haha, <laughs> I meant with the investigation, silly. I guess you could try to find out more about these lights. Maybe figure out where that picture was taken? I know exactly where to start. Good. I'm gonna get some food now before I pass out. Okie dokie. I'll grab my books and get cracking. Alright, see you in a bit. This is fascinating. Hey! Hey! So, any progress with the search? Yeah, I was able to identify that flower. It's called the Red Scythe, or Rosia Falcus. I discovered that there was a small nature reserve near Conwell Springs, which was established in 89. The Red Scythe is on their list of endangered plants. Hmm. I made a photocopy of the botany book page in case you want it later. All right. That's something. I should go check it out. Maybe I can narrow down the place where that picture was taken. My thoughts exactly. Here you go. The nature reserve is marked out on this map. Jeez, you've been busy. Well, you know, beats homework. Eh. Amen to that. And, uh, good work, Eileen. Happy to help. So what- Oh-ho. Oh, hang on. I'll go get that. Is that Erica? Erica Wade? Hello? This is Erica Wade calling for Kathy Rain. Speaking. Miss Rain, but this is terribly awkward. I realize now how rude I was before. I wanted to apologize and ask if there is anything I can do. Oh ho ho! Here we are. Uh, no, let's let's be nice. We need her help after all. Apology accepted. You can start by answering a few questions. Very well. All right. All right. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather that night in 81? Not really, no. But what I do know is how it destroyed father. Hmm. It did? Oh, yes. The two of them were great friends once. And when Joseph was hurt, they hadn't been talking for some time. Father always hoped they would be able to reconnect one day. He kept putting it off, believing they had time. But in the end, it never happened. So, what were things like back when they were still good friends? Oh, they were like peas in a pod. <laughs> Always sharing their war stories and, and laughing together. In a way, Joseph became the uncle I never had. He was around a lot when Father went out on business trips. Mm. Later on, I, I even met you a few times, when you were just a baby. Oh. I don't remember any of that. Oh, no matter, you were so little then. Erica, I have to ask, why were you so defensive on the phone earlier when I tried to reach out? Oh, I don't know, Kathy. Our families haven't been in touch for a long time. I don't remember exactly when it happened, but we all started drifting apart. My guess is that it had to do with Father's growing wealth. Friendship needs common ground, and we started living in different worlds. Mm -hmm. What happened to your grandfather was the final nail in the coffin. Father just couldn't bear seeing him like that. Neither alive nor dead. All right. What do you know about Lily Myers? She was a young artist who lived somewhere in Conwell Springs. Killed herself, if I recall correctly. Dreadful thing. But other than that, not much. We never knew the family. Do you recognize the nickname Cocky? It may be an Air Force call sign. I can't say that I do. Father had many friends in the Air Force, but no one I can recall by that name. Hmm... What can you tell me about Mr. Wade? My father is a great man. He has so many ideas, so much left to realize, which makes it hurt so much more to see him like this. See him like what? The illness and everything, of course. Mm. Right. Yeah, it must be hard. Oh, yes, indeed. I wish he wouldn't be so stubborn with his treatment. He could 
go to any state-of-the-art hospital, but insists on being treated in that backwater clinic in Conwell Springs. The community clinic in the middle of town? Yes. It's like he's given up and is just waiting for the inevitable to happen. That sounds like a place for us to visit. What do you know about Lily Meyer's art? Oh, that little girl had a twisted mind, let me tell you that. Oh, my father used to have a few pieces of hers in his collection. Horrible things. I couldn't understand why he ever decided to procure them in the first place. You say, used to have. Did he get rid of the paintings? Oh, either that, or, or he put them in storage somewhere. I haven't seen them for years. I never bothered to ask him why. Glad to be rid of them, quite frankly. Hmm. Do you know anything about the Church of the Holy Trinity? It's the one and only church in Conwell Springs. I was baptized there, and I married my husband there. Anything out of the ordinary about them? Oh, not really. They seem like a typical church to me. Okay. Well, that's about it, I guess. Okay, that's all I needed. Very well. Feel free to call back if you have any more questions. All right. Wade is in Conwell Springs. He's being treated in the clinic. Okay. We are making good progress. That was Erica Wade. Her father is being treated at the clinic in Conwell Springs. Being treated? He's sick? Looks that way. Small miracle they managed to keep it out of the press. Yeah, I suppose you are returning to talk to him? It'll have to be tomorrow. It's quite late for that now. I suppose. Scrabble? Oh, you're so on. I will crush you. Scrabble. Oh. You're off your game today. Is everything all right? Oh, shut up. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Oh, up late, thinking about your grandpa and everything? Not just that, I keep having this bad dream. Mm, yeah. Well, it's not exactly a dream, it's something that actually happened. Oh? What is it? I'm not sure I should tell you. You can trust me. Whatever it is, I promise I won't judge. Oh, uh, you definitely will. Well, it's your funeral. So, uh, I used to be 16 and also pregnant. Uh, someone, we need an emergency Jesus stat. <laughs> oh no, I broke it. <laughs> Please go on. Uh, well, don't be a weird Christian about this. We have a five year old. You can probably put two and two together. You had an abortion. Sure did. Major pain in the ass, too, but hey, couldn't let that pregnancy go untreated. <sighs> I'm glad you're telling me, but I really wish you hadn't done that, Kathy. None of your business. Who was the, um, you know, the. Uh huh. Oh my god. The donor? You wouldn't know him. The two of us would have made terrible parents, though. I respect your decision, but you know how I feel about this. <clears throat> that guy up there, he's pro life. And I'm with him. Eh. Uh, I got right. I gotta say. You're being really cool about this, E. Well, I don't know. I don't think she's being cool. Cross, flip the table and storm off or something. I'm not a walking stereotype, you know. Uh, you are a little bit. Red-headed nerd with the glasses. Ha ha. But Kathy, if you keep having that nightmare, perhaps you should talk to somebody about it. Maybe. But I doubt obsessing over it is very healthy either. Your turn, E. Oh, fine. Hmm. Oh! I play... Apricot? Orange. Yay, bingo! 67 points. Bingo's a different game. Well, 
Ain't that fucking peachy. We're playing Maybe Scrabble right now. Sour grapes. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> That night, Kathy dreams. What the absolute the painted one approaches? Is it time? The red man. <laughs> yes, a fire that burns so bright, it is almost unbearable to see. Uh huh. My thoughts exactly. Indeed. It seems the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Shall we sculpt some flesh friends then? Excuse me. Sculpt some flesh friends? Very well. I will attend to the threshold. The red man. Didn't know this was going to get all eldritch up in here. Good morning, Sunshine. Please tell me I dreamt all those Scrabble losses last night. Three times in a row. Rub it in, why don't you? I'll just go strangle myself now. Oh, you. Don't be a sore loser. So what's the plan today? Mr. Wade is the plan. I'll head for the clinic right away. While I'm at it, I'm going to check out the church and the nature reserve. Okie dokie. What can I do to help? Why don't you continue looking into the lights? I have a feeling they're the key to solving all of this. Mm. You could also look up the history of Conwell Springs in general, see if anything unusual has been going on. I'll get right on it. Great. Thanks, E. Oh, by the way, don't forget to check out the page I gave you about the red scythe. It's a pretty interesting flower. Right. Yeah. Okay. New location added. We got all sorts of stuff to check out. Um, but I've been going for about, uh, four hours now. Let me save the game here. Uh, find Wade at clinic. Oh. Clinny, Clinny. Find Wade at Clinny. Um... Yeah, I've been going for about four hours now. I think it's time to call it a day. Um, okay, I got stuck at the beginning, but now that uh, I'm past that part, I'm really enjoying it. Having a lot of fun. I'm enjoying these, uh, these mystery point-and-click adventure games. So, I'm going to play more of this, maybe on on Tuesday? Usually I stream on Wednesdays, but I have a dentist appointment. So, might be a Tuesday stream instead? I'll have to see. I will, uh, I will let everybody know. Um, anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Um... If you enjoy these streams, uh, I have a Discord channel where you can hang out with all sorts of cool queer folks and you can stay up to date on when I go live and when I upload VODs to YouTube. Um, okay, let me see if there's anybody online for us to raid. Uh... Well, looks like Penny Snapcube is online. Let's raid her. And, uh, yeah, thank you everybody for watching. And hopefully see you again, uh, in a couple days. Bye bye.